Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be going over everything you need to know to grow citrus in the ground or in a pot. I'm gonna go over all the requirements, planting, watering, fertilizing, pruning, pests and disease, and more. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. I have had some kind of citrus at every house I've lived in for the past 48 years, except this one. This is the first, and so it's time to change that. Here, I'm gonna be growing citrus both in the ground and in containers. Now, you might be growing in the ground or containers. You might only be growing in containers because you're forced to due to where you live. Citrus come very close to dying at any temperature under 32 degrees. So if that's your climate, you're gonna have to grow your citrus in pots. But don't worry, citrus actually love growing in pots and they do really well. Now you're not gonna get a huge tree in a pot. Uh, citrus trees only grow how large the pot will let them. So of course your harvests are gonna be smaller, but you're definitely gonna get good harvests if you take care of them properly. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you're planting in the ground, uh, the first thing you're going to want to know is how big is this tree going to get? I mean, there's dwarf varieties all the way up to standard varieties, which can grow, you know, 25 feet. So you need to know what size it is so you know where to place it. You don't want it too close to the house. You don't want it too close to other trees. So make sure either the label says it or you do some research to find out. No matter what the variety or the size of the tree is, they're all going to need full sun. And that means 8 to 12 hours a day. The more sun, the better. If you're growing in pots, it kind of depends on what your climate is to tell you what type of pot you want to grow in. Um, in a hot, dry climate like mine, terracotta aren't the best choice. Now, terracotta is, would be my choice because we're planting these in our Mediterranean garden. So I actually found some pots that look just like they are made of terracotta, except they're made of plastic. Terracotta breathes through the sides and so it allows moisture to escape very freely and especially in hot dry weather. Now if you live in a damp humid climate you can use a plastic pot you can use a terracotta pot either one is going to work just fine. Now they also have um, sealants that you can put on terracotta that are supposed to be food safe I don't know I haven't done a lot of looking into it but you can paint it on the inside and outside of your pot and it keeps them less porous. Now, no matter what type of pot you're dealing with, you are gonna want drainage. Now, these pots here did not come with any drainage holes. And if that's the case for you, you need to put some in there. Now, I put six in here. Um, they're about a quarter inch in diameter. Uh, now, if you have a terracotta pot, it probably comes with a large hole in the middle, and that should work just fine. Now, as far as pot size, the bigger, the better, um, to a point. So when you have a small pot, it's gonna be harder to maintain the moisture level in that pot evenly. So the larger the pot you get, the easier it is to maintain the moisture. And as we already talked about, the larger the pot, the larger the tree. And so, of course, we would want to get as big of a pot as possible so we can have as large of a tree as possible. But if you're growing in pots and so you can bring them in in the wintertime, you have to be able to maneuver that pot from wherever you have it indoors. So remember that. As big as you can get, that you can move easily. And we'll talk about how to bring them in for the winter in a little bit. So what type of soil do they like? Well, in the ground, they can deal with anything except for heavy clay. Sandy soil is okay, but it's going to need to have a little bit more monitoring of the moisture and nutrient levels. If you have a soil that's heavy clay, you wanna definitely dig two or three times the diameter of the root ball that you're planting, dig it out, and then amend all of that soil with compost and gypsum. That is gonna allow the soil to be a little bit more free draining than heavy clay actually is. Compost will also drastically help the moisture level and the uh, nutrient level stay more consistent in a sandy soil. 
Now, according to the experts, citrus like a somewhat acidic soil between 5.5 and 6.5. Now, I don't know how picky they actually are because I live in Southern California, which is one of the premier um, citrus growing areas in the nation. And most of our soil here is about you know, 6.5 to 7.5, which is right in the middle and sometimes a little more alkaline. And they do great here. So those are all things to keep in mind when you're planting in the ground. As far as planting in a pot, the planting mix should be moisture retaining, but well draining. And so a good half and half mix of cactus potting mix and regular potting mix would be really great and ideal for any kind of citrus you wanted to grow in a pot. If you can't find cactus mix, you could just get some perlite and mix um, about a five to one ratio of potting mix to um, perlite. And that's gonna lighten up the medium and allow it to be more free draining. So that brings us to planting. And in the ground, it's pretty straightforward. Dig a hole a little larger than the root ball, unless you have to amend the soil. Plant the tree so that the top of the soil in the container is even with the top of the soil in the new spot. Now I'm adding a gopher basket here for protection. Of course, that's optional. Backfill the soil and tamp it down every so often. And then once it's filled, make a watering basin around the tree that's a little wider than the tree's drip line. Throw in some fertilizer. I'm using Citrus Tone from Espoma. This is a slow release organic fertilizer. I'll link to that as well down below. And just uh, use the fertilizer according to the package directions, depending on what size tree you're planting. Water the tree deeply now and always. And as an optional but important step, I fill the watering basin with mulch. In this case, compost that is almost completely broken down. Now in a container, I'm gonna fill it with as much potting soil as I need to make sure that uh, when I put this in here, the top of this first pot is at the same level as the new pot. We're a little low right there. Okay, that's probably about right. So now what I'm gonna do is fill in around that pot with more potting soil. I know this seems weird, but I'll show you, I promise it'll make sense in a minute. Tamp it down every once in a while. Make sure it's nice and tight in there. Once you've got that tightly in there, we're gonna lift the pot out, lift the plant out of the pot, and put it right back in the hole. It's so much easier than having to put the plant in and trying to keep it centered while you're trying to fill around it and the soil keeps falling back in. To me, this is just easier. Now for this size pot, the bag says two cups of fertilizer. I'm gonna estimate. Now we're just gonna mix that down into the soil. You could also put this in as you fill the soil up. But eventually, with watering, it's all gonna get in there. Now an optional step would be to mulch the top. If you live in a hot, dry summer climate, just putting some of that uh, partially done compost on there as a mulch, it's just gonna hold in the moisture that much better. Now for watering in the ground, you always want to water deeply, deeply and infrequently. When you first plant your tree, you're going to fill up that watering basin, let it soak in, fill it up again. And I would do that several times throughout the uh, first few weeks. Once those roots get better established, you can probably do that once a week, maybe once every two weeks, depending on your soil but you want to have the water as deep as possible so the roots go as deep as possible. Now with pots, you're gonna to wanna to water those 
fully as well. And you're gonna know that it's all soaked in because you're gonna see water start to pour out the bottom of the pot. Now, once that happens, give it an extra 30 seconds or so before you stop watering, just to make sure that every last square inch in there is sufficiently moist. So whether you're planting your citrus in the ground or in pots, they always want consistently moist roots without being waterlogged. Now in the ground, I would really recommend a soaker or a drip system just to make sure that it really soaks it deep and slowly. Um, otherwise, you wanna put it on like a trickle and set a timer to make sure that it soaks in deep. For pots, this will eventually be on a drip, but if not, uh, definitely check the pot before you water. So you can use a, a moisture meter or just stick your finger in two inches deep and if you feel moisture, don't water. And if you don't feel moisture, water. Uh, in the ground, I wouldn't recommend using sprinklers because sprinklers consistently hitting the, the trunk of the tree can actually cause a lot of damage, uh, disease, and rot. So I recommend not doing that. So now that you've fertilized um, at planting time, that is a slow release fertilizer. And there's two times a year that you really wanna feed your citrus trees. The first time is in late winter, right before the plant starts to put on growth and blooms. And then the second time would be after the blooming has stopped and the, the fruits start to develop. And you can use the citrus tone for both feedings. It's organic and it's slow release. Yellowing leaves is really common in citrus and it's most often, the simplest solution is over, either over or under watering. So we had a ton of rain this year and the citrus were in those little pots and they got a lot of water and they got a lot of nutrients that just kept getting flushed out of the, out of the, the pot. So they were yellow. So sometimes just some fertilizer will fix that, uh, make sure it's not over and under watered. If you have chlorosis, and that's gonna be where you see the, the leaf will turn yellow, but the, green, the, the veins will stay green. That's chlorosis, and something like that needs to be fixed in another way. I use this citrus spray, I'll put a link down below. It's got like sulfur and iron and magnesium, and that's gonna clear up the chlorosis issue. As far as pollination is concerned, most citrus trees are self-fruitful. There are some tangerines that aren't, uh, Self-fruitful just means they don't need a tree of another variety growing nearby to cross-pollinate. So if you have a question on that, definitely check with your garden center or look up the variety on Google and see what it says. Citrus trees will start to bloom in the springtime. It's actually starting right now to put some blooms on it. And it will bloom and then the, the fruits will mature all summer and harvest will be sometime in the fall, winter. Now there's no real way of looking at a citrus fruit to tell if it's ripe. Um, you can, when you think it's ripe and you're kind of getting into that October, November, December time, and it looks like it might be ripe, take one and test it. Give it a taste test and see. And unlike most fruit, you don't have to harvest all of your citrus at one time. In fact, the best storage for your citrus is hanging on the tree. Hanging on the tree, they can last for several months, way longer than if you pick them and try to store them. Now, if you're growing them in a pot so that you can bring them indoors in the winter, then when you start getting you know, into fall or winter, whenever you start to usually get freezing temperatures, start watching the forecast. And when your temperatures drop below 40 degrees, it's time to start thinking about bringing your citrus inside. Now, once you do that, you may want to repot them, give them a prune, and then bring them in, or just bring them in. When you bring them in, you're gonna to wanna to put them in the sunniest spot you have. A south-facing window that gets eight hours of sun would be ideal. And they can handle that lower light level for a couple of months. Anything longer than that. So if you have seriously long winters, you're gonna to need to think about investing in a grow light, something to hang above the plant, to give it the light that it needs to really thrive during those long winter months. And while it's indoors uh, in, a, in a window, you wanna rotate it every couple of weeks just so all the sides get even sunlight. Now in late winter or spring, when the temperatures start to rise and you're well above freezing outside, you can move these back out. However, citrus uh, go through something called shock when they go from one extreme to another. And so, Kind of like seedlings, you wanna harden them off when you bring them outside. So I'd put them outside in morning sun, maybe a couple hours of morning sun, and that should be for maybe a week. 
and then you can move them into full sun with some shade cloth over it. And every day or two, start to uncover them a little bit longer each time. By the end of those two weeks, uh, they should be able to be in full sun, no problem. All right, now everybody's favorite subject, pests and disease. Rats are a major issue. If you have rats in your area, they love citrus, especially oranges. I can tell you from personal experience at our last house. Um, so rats will eat all of your oranges before you get a chance to. So if you have that problem, um, make sure all of the branches are limbed up so they can't jump off of the ground onto a branch. You can get a rat guard that can be, go on the trunk. It wraps around the trunk and it makes it too slick for them to climb. You just don't want your uh, tree to be, you know, in the vicinity of buildings or other plants and trees where the rat can jump on those and then get into your tree. Um, you can also resort to traps. On my website, uh, under products I love, I'll link it below, I have rat traps that have never failed me. Snails can also be a nuisance. If you have a snail problem, um, you can wrap a copper band around the trunk of your tree. Uh, again, make sure the rest of your tree isn't touching other bushes or the ground. Ants can also be a problem and they can bring aphids into your tree or, or at least keep them there happily. So if you, ha if you have an ant problem, you can actually take some saran wrap and wrap it around the trunk of your tree and smear a two inch band of Vaseline around on, on top of that. You don't want the Vaseline on the actual trunk. So the saran wrap protects the trunk, but put a smear of Vaseline around it and, and ants won't cross that sticky barrier. They also have ant guards that do the same thing, but they're a little more expensive than Vaseline and saran wrap. Many pests and disease can be prevented, especially disease, um, with washing your tree. Uh, washing it with just water actually helps. It gets very dusty and dirty over the year, and you can just spray it off with water. If you have some maybe pest or disease issues, you can use a, an, an insecticidal soap. It is organic. This is a safer brand. Safer is the brand, it's not just Safer. Um, but that is a great thing to wash your orange trees with. And I usually do that, especially on large trees, every single year. You can put it in a, uh, a hose end sprayer and spray the whole tree. And it just, and the trees look super great once you finish. They're right back to being glossy green instead of that dull, dusty color they get. The last thing I wanna talk about is pruning your citrus. Now, this size, you don't need a lot of pruning. There are a couple of long branches here that I might prune down just a little to kind of maintain the shape that I'm gonna want when this tree gets a little bit bigger. For adult citrus, you want to prune right after your last frost and before the first flush of growth. Pruning your citrus trees are gonna encourage new growth, so you definitely don't wanna do it in the fall because that's gonna encourage new growth that either, you're either gonna to have to deal with in the house or that could possibly get uh, damaged by frost outside. The three goals of pruning are to maximize airflow through the tree, to maximize fruiting, and to keep a decent shape of your tree. All this being said, citrus are very forgiving, and at my last house, I pruned, and I wish I had a picture of this, I pruned it down to the main trunk. There were three branches growing up and I pruned them all off because it was such a big overgrown tree when we moved in and that tree grew back beautifully. So make sure main branches are evenly spaced, long branches are topped so you can reach those branches when they have fruit on them. And that's with or without a ladder, that's your choice. You could let the tree grow taller. Of course, it's gonna give you more fruit. Um, and then you want a lot of the branches to be on top. So when you top those long main branches, they're gonna put out a lot more growth. That's where the blooms are and that's where the fruit is. Once you have the main framework of the tree worked out, really a yearly pruning in late winter, early spring is going to just kind of maintain its size and at the same time, you're kind of cutting those end branches off so they start to divide into more branches for more fruit. Well, I think that's it. I've given you everything that I know about growing citrus, both in the ground and in pots. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. Comment down below. I would really appreciate that. It helps the video out. Share it with a friend. That also helps. But if you haven't subscribed already, please do so, and I'll see you next time.